Well, always a pleasure to sit down and talk with Jordan Thompson face to face. I joined the podcast a couple of weeks ago, just before Christmas. And let's talk about that. A little bit of family time with the family, uh, the fighting family. But was everyone chilling out? Fighting family, but there was no fighting. We did a little bit of training. A little, we do a nice little yearly family session when it comes to the end of the year. So that was good. Good times with the family. Our annual Scrabble game, which is ever so competitive, which I won again. To be honest, I will be honest, my mum beat me the year before, so I had to come back with a vengeance this year. I had my dictionary out on my on my train down to Kent, so yeah, a good victory nonetheless though, but no, good family time, good to chill out, but straight back to it. I said this to Pat McCormack, who I spoke to a little bit earlier on today, that when you reach the end of the year, it's always a time to look forward, but it's also a time to reflect and look back. How do you look back on, on the year you had and, and perhaps what you learned to take forward into 2023? I mean, hindsight is a good thing, and obviously it's good to just reflect and and go through what what the year has kind of presented to you. And you know, it was I think it was a good year, a successful year. At the end of the day, we I won my first professional major title, which was which was an amazing thing, an amazing achievement. Um, didn't go exactly to plan, but a win's a win, and we got the belt. So everything's looking forward. And um, there were a few things. A few little changes here and there, a few tweaks that um, we've been making behind the scenes. And I'm just looking to looking forward to putting those things right and, and really proving myself this year to, to being one of the best cruiserweights out there. I know you're a bit of a perfectionist, Jordan. And, and when we spoke about the fight with Vassal Dukar, when you went down on the canvas for the first time as a pro, but you got up and, and you won the fight. You dominated the fight up until that, that passage in, in the last round. What have you been able to take from that? Because I know you said you've not been able to look at it too positively. But there must be something that you've been able to, to use to your benefit heading into next year. hundred percent. I mean, listen, like I am the, my biggest critic without a doubt. Like I'm, I'm very hard on myself. I'm a perfectionist. I do expect the best. It's, it's been ingrained in me from a, a little kid. You know, it's the pursuit of excellence. That's what I've been brought up knowing. So to go about the fight the way I did, uh, I didn't really approach it the way I wanted to. You know, I think if I'd approached it the way I wanted to, I think I'd have got him out of there pretty quick. But Listen, hindsight is an amazing thing. We can look back and say shoulda, woulda, coulda. But at the end of the day, we got the win. We got some valuable, valuable rounds under the under the belt, which every I know everyone's been keen for, apart from myself. <laughs> but no, it was good, man. I learned a lot, um, and I learned a lot about myself as well. And I'm looking forward to getting back in there and, and showing what I've learned about myself and showing where I'm going to put things right and, and stuff like that. So listen, there are some positives to take from it. I did some real good work in there. I boxed beautifully. I completely neutralized the guy um, for for nine rounds and. 45 seconds um, he could lay a hand on me near enough but yeah some positives but yeah a couple of things which I wasn't happy with which will be coming right you talked about tweaks and changes some big news coming out in the in the last few days I'm sure it's something you've been working on behind the scenes for a little while that you've linked up with Mr Tony Sims in the matchroom gym in Brentwood what can you tell us about this link up and what excites you about it most I mean, what well, doesn't it excite? It's, it's just an exciting thing, man. Big, big, big thing. Um, very, very happy and privileged to be to be able to even train with someone like Tony Sims in and around some real elite fighters. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, man. I've, I've been down there a few days now, and it's just an amazing vibe. Good vibe, good energy, good people. Um, just bags of experience all around the gym, from fighters to trainers, S and C. It's man. It's, it's only looking good. Things are looking good. So I can't wait to just really get stuck in the three things I've been after. Structure, consistency, and routine, and I can't wait to just to just implement that into my my routine and just get get cracking this year, man. And I think I'm in the best place possible. Tony is a, a great man, a great boxing man. You only have to look at what he's done with certain fighters, the likes of Darren Barker and Joe Caldina. The list goes on and on and on. The biggest thing that every coach will say about a fighter is they have to be coachable. In the, in the the small time you've been with Tony, what do you feel that you've already been able to absorb? What I've already been able to absorb from him. Oh, I mean, listen, we've been working on, there was a few things, I mean, he's watched um, my fight, my last fight, my most recent one, and there were a few things that we've been talking about, won't go too much into him, but um, yeah, no, there's a few things that we've been working on him diligently, even just over the few days, and listen, I take things on pretty quick, he's a great teacher, a great uh, a great coach, so I've been picking things up well, he's been passing on all his knowledge, and listen, it's working, It's gonna. we're going to gel nicely, and listen, it's going to be some, some exciting fights coming this year, that's for sure. And you've always talked about artistic violence being being the mantra, but you said to me off camera a little bit earlier today, I said, what's Tony trying to drill into you? And you said, maybe more violence and a little bit less art. Is is that, is he, is he, because he, he obviously thinks you can punch as you can. Yeah, no, listen, lad, listen, it's no, it's no um, secret that I've got power in both hands. And I just think it's, it's just maximising that power. Um, 
I think in that in that last fight, I was maybe a boxing a little bit too bit maybe a boxing a little bit too much, maybe a little bit too cautious. Um, but it's all about balance, and that's literally artistic violence. Is finding that balance, finding when to look pretty, when to look cute, you know, make it look nice, and then also finding the time to completely take the guy's head off. But yeah, balance balance has been restored, as they say. No doubt you'll want a bit of time just to get to know each other a little bit better and work on a few things in terms of. A date in 2023. What's in your mind? What are you looking at? Just eight. eight I've been telling people ASAP. Be wary. <laughs> That's just I want to get out ASAP. But yeah, listen. I'm at that stage in my career now where we can't afford any any mistakes, any slip ups. So we just got to make sure that we we've gelled nicely. You know, we we've got a good routine going, and and we're both heading towards the right thing. But I think more than anything, we've just got to make sure that we've got a good working relationship. We crack on, which we seem to have perfectly. And listen, man. I think things are looking up. I'm hoping to get out maybe March early March, mid-March. So we'll see, man, but as soon as possible, literally. You turned a lot of heads last year, Jordan, with the explosive knockout wins. Heading into this year, with that structure stability you've got behind the scenes, do you believe this will truly be the year that we see the best of Jordan Thompson? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, it's, it's, it's all in. That's what I've been telling. All I've been telling anyone close to me, it's, it's all in for me this year. This this is the year that, that I will make the breakthrough. Um, there's no two ways about it. Literally, it's, it's, it's all or nothing. That's the type of individual I am, so... I'm all in. The people around me and my team now, they're all in. And it's only going to be, be great things to come. And the type of man that you are, the type of athlete you are, very high standards. You said to me on the podcast that, you know, you're looking to be a world champion or fighting for a world title by the end of the year. Is that the answer? No, without a doubt. I mean, listen, like, I, I, believe, I still believe in my potential. And that's the main thing. I know there's a few people who maybe after the last fight aren't really going to believe in me as much as they might have. But me as an individual, I believe in myself more than anything. And... It's going to be a very good year, a revealing year nonetheless. Jordan Thompson, we look forward to it. Thanks for your time.